Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 side scroller video. In today's video we are going to be creating this really cool exploding item that we've got here that's actually going to take away some of the player's health and if the player runs out of health it's going to kill the player they're going to drop down to the ground. Now we've already got our death and our health system up and running so we're pretty much going to be getting this, this little rock in here telling it to explode and if the player is close enough to it it's going to knock them down to the ground. So let me go ahead and show you it sort of in the works if I run up to this get too close It's gonna take away a bit of players health if it goes down again players is gonna drop down to the floor And they are just gonna die It's a really really cool system and you guys can start using things like these to start creating obstacles that the player has to avoid Also, you can see I've got a slight timer on this So if you wanted to you could even set intervals where the player has a certain amount of time to get through it And it's gonna be safe if they don't you know well tough luck so one more time we go ahead and show you this object so you can see exactly what we're creating we run up to it when it explodes it takes away half the player's health if they're still in it a second time they're going to drop down to the ground and they are dead that is it cool so let me go ahead and give you a rough overview of this blueprint so you can sort of see some of what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be creating so first things first we've got a begin overlap and an end overlap node the first one for begin overlap pretty much tells you know the engine whether or not the player is inside the radius and the second one tells the player to leave the radius if they sort of stop overlapping with the object it's quite simple and then above here we've just got a little bit of code that spawns an emitter sets some scaling and then it runs a check to see whether or not the player is inside the radius and if they are we're going to take away a little bit of health and if the health is below zero basically what it's going to be doing is telling it to kill off the player and tell them to die so Let's go ahead and see if we can recreate all of this. I'm going to go ahead and delete the object from my content browser and we're going to recreate it all in front of you guys now. So first things first, we need to go into our content browser and we need to create a new blueprint class. Go ahead and create an actor and then you can call this whatever you like. For me, this is going to be called exploding rock. Once we've done that, go ahead and open it up. And first things first, we need to go ahead and add in a static mesh so that we can actually see the item. Call this static mesh anything you like, I'm just going to call it rock for now. And then going over to the details panel, go to static mesh, and I'm just going to tell this to have the rock, uh, you know, the rock static mesh. It's a bit big at the moment, so let's go ahead and drag it into our scene so that we can actually see how it's going to look. I think that's a bit too big and a bit too obvious at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up, I'm going to go into my viewport, click it, Go into the details panel and under scale, I'm going to set this to 0.3 on the X, 0.3 on the Y, and then 0.3 on the Z axis. And that will make it nice and small. You can make it even smaller if you want to. Just keep changing these values. All that is is just for scale. So I'm going to compile that. And I'm going to go and have a look at it in the viewport. And you can see that is looking quite nice. So next thing that we need to do then is we need to go and create... Next thing that we need to do now is we need to go ahead and create a box collision and this box collision is essentially going to be our way of checking whether or not the player is in the radius because we don't want them to have to be inside the rock because that's not possible. This box collision is going to span just a little bit bigger than the rock and that is basically going to be our blast radius. So I'm going to add this box collision. Once I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Circ and Scale Objects tool and I'm just going to make this nice and big, so just dragging it out just like this. Just use your transformation tools to get it to the right size and I think that looks good. So now, if the player is sort of in that radius, they are going to be knocked down on the ground. It's going to take away some of their health and all that good stuff. So, compile it. Let's move this over and let's check out the blast radius in the game. That seems about right and it looks good. So next thing we need to do then is we need to start telling the engine whether or not the player is actually in the blast radius so what we've got to do is we're going to go over to the event graph and then you see where we've got this begin overlap node let's delete that and we're also going to delete event tick because we don't need that as well so first things first click your box collision up in the top left hand corner in your components panel drag it down into the blueprint screen and then on the right hand side create a on event begin overlap event and then click the box again and then do the same thing for end overlap as well 
Once we've done that, delete the box and let's get started. So, first things first, let's go ahead and do the begin overlap stuff. So the first thing we need to do is see which other actor it is that's going to be, you know, triggering this event. For us, it's only one actor and that's just going to be the player. So I'm going to drag out other actor and I'm just simply going to cast to side scroller character. Once we've done that, we need to go ahead and pretty much create a variable and we're going to call this player in radius and from here we are going to pretty much tell this to set the player in radius to true and then we're going to hook this up and we're also going to add in a print string just so that we can see it in action so print string and in this we're just going to write in in and now we've pretty much got to do the same thing for this side as well so cast to side scroller character just copy and paste this if you want to and then just hook up object to other actor these two little execution pins copy player in radius and this time because they're leaving the radius we're going to make, make sure that that is unchecked so they're not still in there and they don't still get damaged and then just hook it up just like that copy the print string drag it down hook it up and then from here we are just going to write the type in out so if we compile this and if we press play hopefully when we start walking inside of this radius now it should begin to uh, say in and out in the top left hand corner which it is and that is all good you guys might actually have this little def object that we created before uh, this one here this little box I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of my scene that way it doesn't kill us off but anyway let's go ahead and press play possess run over to this object in if I jump out of it, it goes out in out perfect cool so now we've done that we need to start making all of the magic happen so what we need to do is just above this, we need to go ahead and use event begin play. And what we're going to do is we're going to spawn an emitter at location. And for the location, we are going to get uh, get location. And that is going to be just for itself. And that is it. So the next thing that we need to do now is we need to set the emitter that's actually going to be spawned when we begin to play the game. For us, that's going to be explosion as, you know, it's sort of the effect that we're looking for. So if we go ahead and compile this, and then you can see this isn't working for whatever reason. It's not, uh, it must have a connection. Okay. So drag this out, get location, or get actor location is the one that we needed, not go get world at location. Compile it. And let's go ahead and see how this looks. So if I press play and then simulate instead, you can see it's only a tiny little explosion and we might want it to be a little bit bigger. So what we need to do is we need to pretty much tell it to make that the scale of that explosion a little bit bigger. So drag this out and we're going to type in set world scale 3D. Once we've done that, just hook up the return value to target and then the new scale is going to be free. Just go ahead and set that on all of the axes, compile it and hopefully now when we press play and simulate, we've got a much bigger explosion. It's looking good. So that is all fine. Now what we need to do is we need to do a bit of, we need to use the branch node to check whether or not the player is actually in the radius. And if they are in the radius, we're going to take away some health from them. So let's go ahead and do this. So drag out set world scale to branch. And then from this, where we've got our condition here, we need to drag in player in radius and set that to condition and then with this little branch node it's going to allow us to fire off some fire off some script based on whether or not the player is in the radius if they're not in the radius we don't want it to do anything we don't want it to take away any health and if they are in the radius then what we need to do is cast to the side scroller character and then we need to take away some of the health so go ahead and create that cast to side scroller character Cool, so as the side scroller character, what we need to do is pretty much tell it to set the player health and then we're just going to do some magic from there. Under object, we need to set this to get player, uh, get player character and that way it will successfully cast to the side scroller character. Once we've done this, we need to go ahead and tell it to take away some health from the player. So what we're going to do is drag out player health. And we're going to do float minus float and then from here we are going to get a reference to player float uh, get a reference to player health so get player health drag it in and hook this up to the a value 
So this little number here now is pretty much the value of the amount of health that this explosion is going to take away from the player. So for me, I'm going to get it to take away half of the player's health. The default value for player health is 1, so half of that is going to be 0 0.5. And once we've done that, it's going to take away some of the player's health. So if I compile this, and if I press play, the explosion goes off. It only goes off once, so we can't really test it. So what I'm actually going to do, just for testing purposes, is I'm going to quickly add in a quick delay in here. I'm going to set delay duration to 2. And then I'm going to drag this all the way back to the beginning so it starts the whole process again. And that way the explosion goes on and on and on and on until, you know, you tell it not to. Also, I've got to create another delay for over here for, you know, when the player isn't in the blast radius. And then I've pretty much got to drag this back to the beginning as well. So if I compile this, press play, and possess, the explosion is going to keep going off and off. But the player isn't in the radius, it's not going to do anything. If we do get in the radius, you can see it's taken half the health. Do it again, and it's not going to do anything to the player, but it's taken away the health, and that is the important bit. So the reason why it's not killing the player at the moment is because we haven't checked to see whether or not the player's health is below zero, and then telling it to die. So let's go ahead and do that. So open up your blueprint again, exploding rock, and then we're going to go drag it off, get rid of this delay, get rid of the other delay as well. Actually, we're going to leave this delay here. We actually need that here. That is pretty much just going to keep telling it to go on and on and on so the player can't just sort of avoid it once and that is it. So from here, what we need to do is play a health. We need to run a branch check and the condition for this time is going to be the return value for this. And we're pretty much going to do float. We're going to type that in when we right click and then we need to check to see whether or not A is less than or equal to B. That way we can see whether or not health is less than or equal to zero. And if it is less than or equal to zero, we pretty much need to tell it to die. If it's false, we're just going to pretty much tell it to delay again and go back to the beginning. So leave this default value down here to zero for now. And then for true, once again, we need to cast to the side scroller character just like this. And as the object wildcard, once again, get player character. And then as side scroller character, just simply type in death. And that will call the function for death and it will drop the player all the way down to the ground. So if we get our false value for, you know, when the player does die, doesn't die, we're going to tell it to add a delay and then we're going to set it all the way back to the beginning. So drag the completed all the way over here and that's pretty much just going to loop it until the player is dead. We're not going to add a delay onto the end of death because we don't want anything to be running at all after the player's died because you know we paused the game. So if we compile this now, press play, possess, jump in here, let's go ahead and see what happens. So you can see now the player is dying when the explosion goes off for the second time. Let's test that again, run up to it. Cool, so when I run into this, first time takes away some health, second time it just kills off the player. But the second explosion went off a bit too quick there, and that's simply because I need to set the delay duration here to 2, and I need to make sure I go ahead and do the same thing for this one. That one's set to 2 already, so we are all good there. That is pretty much everything for our rock now. If we press play, jump into this, first time it goes off, you know, it starts to damage the player, so you need to get out of there as soon as possible. If we go into it another time, that's it. Player is going to die. It's not good. That's it. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep on creating. Stay awesome. See you next time. Your boy Virtus, signing out.